Hello and welcome to CIO News. I am Krish Soni, your host for the broadcast and chief editor at CIO News. This is our exclusive interview episode on the topic to discuss digital adoption by the HFCs and NBFCs to automate the process and optimize manpower. It is a recorded session and will be available on our website that is cionews.co.in and our CIO News LinkedIn handle. It is my pleasure to invite my guest for today. He has been uh, on our CIO News platform in the past as well. And um, he has rich 32 years plus years of experience as a CIO, a CDO, and a CTO. Um, he's worked with various brands in his career. And uh, so we have Mr. Um, Dominic Vijay Kumar, um, the Chief Technology Officer at ART Housing Finance India Limited. Um, thank you so much, uh, Vijay, for joining us today. And I'm really looking forward to having a conversation with you on the important topic of digital adoptions by the HFCs and NBFCs. Thank you so much, uh, Kushpu. It's a pleasure to be on air with your uh, channel. And I think it's my second meeting with your company, I mean, with your, um, your channel, CI1 News. But, um, it's 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 always a boost to all our CIOs fraternity. You know, we get a chance to explore ourselves and you know get self marketed by, and it's uh, it's it's more of uh, uh, sharing of you know knowledge sharing, yeah. what we speak and what we hear from the uh, peer CIO. This helps us not only professionally grow, even the personality we get a good growth. So it's it's a pleasure to be with you, and uh, I think we should uh, start off. Let's start off. Absolutely. And I think also because in this new digital era, it's so very important to be to be there in the fraternity, to be heard, um, to listen to the CIOs and see what's happening, share business best practices, etc. So, um, yes, it is always a pleasure to interact with you and all the other uh, CIOs in the industry. Um, fantastic. Yes. So I want to begin with putting across my first question to you. Um, how digital technologies are helping the HFCs and NBFCs evolve? Uh, just to give you a small background, uh, in a lending, uh, we, we are the typical, uh, if you start being a typical lender, when you go back around uh, five to six years back, the process was simple, like, you know, we used to carry a big file. Salesperson walks into the customer's place, picks up the documents, right, from your uh, um, um, proof of address, proof of identity, then your bank statements, and, you know, there's a lengthy form, it gets filled up. And, you know, uh, as, a, as, a, as a ROR, when he doesn't get these documents in a day, at least in a week, at least three, four times, he has to approach a customer and get this documentation to just to log in a file. So when you look at the TAT, overall TAT for any loan for that matter, whether it's a PR or a consumer durable or your home loan, but, but a home loan is still more complicated. The process used to take minimum five to seven days time. So that's where, you know, and your operating expense goes up here. Your operating expense, quality of the file comes down, a lot of manual error you tend to do. You keep start doing the same work. So a job which has to be done by one person starts, multiple people start doing it. So the customer, some point of time, starts realizing, you know, uh, uh, the things are not in place. That's one thing where actually the NBFC, I'm not talking about the BFSI, but the NBFC started looking at because we are the NBFC these days dominate the market at the smaller segment, where there's an area which is not being served or underserved areas. So NBFC and HFC, because since I come from HFC. So that's where actually some big minds who had already had the experience started, um, uh, what do you call that, you know, breaking their head and, you know, trying finding out a solution. That's a time where digital was the adoption. See, because technology is something which has always, always been evolving in India, especially in India. India being calling it a city, city. It's been evolving very periodically and we start exploring it. Today, when you look at technology, you, uh, the ROM, if it wants to acquire a customer, the customer acquisition process, which normally happens, that's a lengthy process which happens. Today, instead of taking seven days for getting a customer's file logged in, today we do it within a, a fraction of, especially in PR and consumer durable, it takes maximum 30 to 45 minutes. In a housing loan, max to max one day, subjected to all the documentation. So the digital technology is grown. So just to give you a few examples, like ER, the EKYC is one, the PAN verification one. Today, the latest launch is your account aggregator with the bank statement analyzer. These are something which is uh, making the NBFCs and HFCs to uh, adopt technology, customer making the customer more uh, comfortable. And second thing is, when you look at the data, what customer is going to share with you, 
it's all very very confidential data which we carry and come and today after bringing in the technology the customer has got a sense that you know these documents are secure and these are authenticated document there is no dual verification which is going to come in here because you get it. so that's one one part of the process where the customer acquisition the customer acquisition happens and customer is in place then your underwriting starts up when you're underwriting there are certain things which you still were doing in a manual process that's been automated we have brought in a lot of uh, changes like you know i'll give you a simple example where bank bank statement when you take a bank statement from a customer you need to sit and do a lot of analysis on to that right from his um, average month balance credit debit his uh, i mean loans and whatever emis is paying so it was a lengthy process today the technology is built in such a way that you know automatically the bank statements are analyzed and given to my credit team so that the decision making very fast the sanction process becomes very fast so for right from customer acquisition up to sanction there's a complete technology drawn yes but in india we cannot have 100% technology driven especially in the house loan segment because due to regulatory requirements and all that we still carry some amount of paperwork so i can say around 80 to 90% we are digitized so the customer is so happy that a activity which used to take 10 to 15 days gets done in 4 to 5 days and without much of hassle so right. then from there the, the typical disbursement process happens and these kind of data today what we are collecting is helping us to do a lot of uh, you know build a lot of score cards built a better technology platform for the customers and you know today which to be very frank it's a customer driven area okay. if the customer is made to wait for more than 45 minutes to one hour i myself being a customer if i look at if i if i'm in a queue waiting for more than 45 minutes i'll find an alternate channel and keep moving so i start losing my customer that's where we technology is played a very important role this is a very few things what i told but there's a huge uh data today we have in nbfs and hfcs which has been utilized to do a lot of better underwriting scores because if you don't do underwriting today properly or if your process is not proper if your profile is not good you tend to get into a delinquency nps which is again a hit to the company yeah and this is a, it's a standard thing in the financial industry where you got to be very cautious you can't say you can be 100% yes you have to be cautious so that you start finding so the data what we collect the kind of customers we do and today the und is unserved and under under sector customers or more in tier 3 and tier 4 cities where you get more of customers that's how technology is helping us to reach the remote of remote location and uh, uh, with honorable prime minister pushing digital india movement that's really helping out and and and, and even look at the financial uh, finance minister nirmala sitaraman where she pushes the technology to the maximum so this is all making uh, hfc and nbfs to to adopt technology and at the same time you know keep the things in place security is very important keep the customers data is very secure and kept with us so that there is no misuse of that and this how it today hfcs or adopting technology um, i mean they are adopted technologies yes still we are in the uh, what do you call that you know 60 to 50 to 60% we are getting adopted simultaneously we are getting a lot of other feedback from the governments and you know trying to push things in a better way so we in next 5 years down the lane a housing loan should in uh, it should be a click of a button for us not even 5 years 2 3 years down the lane we should be a click of a button where you can get your housing irrespective of your uh, income irrespective of the background you come from that's it fantastic. on the digital technology helping out fantastic and um, i think very very rightly put across some of the uh, good use cases which can be adopted and which a lot of organizations are adopting as well uh great to know um also uh, how is rpa getting used uh, you know to automate the process and perform it without the help of manpower because i think it's very very important to get rid of the mundane task which um, yeah. you know employees go through and how we can automate that so that better work can happen by these resources so if you can share some use cases so kushbu i can give you some case studies uh, where i think that that's uh, where rpa has actually started to the people started they adopting it it is not only the customer even the organization started adopting rpas basically uh, just to give you one of the examples like you know initial days we used to capture the aadhar card and the pan card and take a photocopy of the, or the, take a picture of that upload it on the system dub, type the number and all those things which was a normally tedious process and second thing you know you tend to have a lot of manual errors coming up there one is we have implemented a technology where uh, automatically by putting the aadhar number your data comes into the picture and the and the pan card is verified this data which comes to my quality control team which is to manually sit and check the quality of the aadhar card the picture you know how clear it is is it a, uh, is it eligible to be logged in is it eligible to be used as a proof of address or proof of identity yeah. today that has been eradicated using an rpa process because the data what you get 
Today we use OCR technology. We use the direct authentication from your UIDI, your PAN card from your NSGL and multiple agencies which gives you. So the manual process which was uh, done by my CPC team has been gradually eradicated and RPA brought in. So one of the RPA case studies what we're using here, where uh, yeah, even you're, when you're typing a now Aadhaar card number or your PAN card number, you tend to make a mistake. And yeah. when you start verifying it, so there your OCR technology comes for me. RPA is nothing but a process which is uh, manually uh, not done, which is done by the system driven and where uh, you call that, you know, uh, I mean, the better output is given. The time which is taken 10 minutes time. So your fraction of second, you got it. So the CPC team's job of um, manual process is eradicated. The quality of the file has been logged. In. Second thing is we use RPA process more at the bot level, the customer service level. Yeah. Uh, because every now, 24 bar 7, I can't have a call center team or a customer service team. And to eradicate this, we have brought in a, a chat bot, which is more of a sentiments driven bot, which will talk to me. I mean, me, if I, I as a customer at 11 o'clock in the night wants to know something about my loan or want to apply for a loan. So this bot helps you out. And this is a common thing which is adopted by many of the NBFCs. And this is also coming out in the vernacular languages. Okay, which is really helping the tier three and tier four customers to address their issue. There's no need for you to have an English or a Hindi. The vernacular languages bots are there. But another one of the RPA process which is coming. And second thing is we use RPA process. I mean, that's a that's a uh, uh, roadmap what we are thinking and how successful that's going to be using. A RPA process, try doing the data analytics, the data, what we capture these days, start building the uh, data warehousing, data mining, because manual process is always a challenge. You tend to have errors, you tend to have, main is the TAT and the accuracy and the quality of data. So we are trying to work on that RPA process, but how successful that is going to have, because already there are big people who are started using it. So these are two case studies which we have implemented and that's been successfully utilized. And there are, because of this, one is, Accuracy is coming, manual intervention is um, taken off, then quality of uh, profile, quality of files, which you when it get logged in, when you do an audit and all that, that's, everything is in place. And second, the, the last thing, which I don't, I don't uh, always, I mean, I always tell my team, uh, it's not that we are trying to snatch the job off, it's we are trying to upgrade the skills. And rather than a guy who was sitting and checking an Aadhaar card and PAN card and seeing this photo is clear, is, yeah, I'm able to see the uh, Aadhaar number. Now he's been upgraded. He's given a better job to do so that his professional skills are getting upgraded and there's a career for him. It's not that we are trying to snatch his job. So RPA is more of, you know, what you want, how you're going to implement. And the RPA is normally a maturity period. It is not overnight starts uh, behaving for you. Even Alexa took a long time. And this, uh, I think Apple's one more uh, bot also took a long time in uh, uh, understanding the humans, especially the Indian human sentiments and start doing. But again, you should to be very frank. Uh, Indian, we as an Indian, we still want to have the personal touch. So somewhere that, you know, we work on that hybrid model to some process we automate, especially the back, back office process we automate and the customer centric at the first level of support, we automate using the process, robotic processes, but it's still customers feel that somebody calling up, I mean, someone, the bank guys calling me and talking talking to me or me walking into the branch, we give a difference that, that, that's uh, touch is still there, but I think gradually, uh, particular segment of customers start adopting. Must be the millennium customers who may start adopting RPA as a process because they are very faster than everyone today. So that's how we are. You've been using RPA. That's few case studies what we use, but it's a very uh, lengthy and a, a very big roadmap being being drawn for RPA process in a different industries. But in our industry right now, we are that's what we are using it now. Correct. Right. You mentioned about the challenges. In fact, my question, the next question was around that only. What are the challenges the HFCs and NBFCs are facing, especially to onboard a traditional customer, you know, with the digital adoption? And uh, um, what are the kind of uh, solutions to these challenges? See, there are two challenges which uh, we are faced uh, being a HFC and, you know, with my PRC, I was also, I seen them struggling. One is adoption of technology, but the business is always a challenge because they have a mindset, you know, they have targets in a month, they have to log in thousand files in a month, they have to log in 500 files. And when you say thousand files, thousand files is a quality portfolio files. You can't just bring in any garbage in and garbage out. So for that, there's always a pressure. So when technology comes into picture, no one is adoption and the process. It is not that it's very tough to work with. It's an actually easy process. Only thing you need to understand and I need to a little bit have hands on it. They will not accept it. This is the biggest challenge. You bring the world's best of best technology. The business team on the ground never adopts technology. You got to keep pushing them to the core. You got to, you know, make a lot of noise and you know give them and and then let it. 
today some companies have started even giving incentives kind of thing you know these are the files which have to be technically logged in and that is one thing which mindset which has people have to uh, come out of that and start adopting technology it is not only for the organization it's for the individual also to achieve his target on time rather than doing it uh, but a job which is taking four hours um, he can get it done in 40 minutes to one hour so there is a huge um, change in that second thing is uh training after imparting training also we face uh, sorry before that this attrition is a problem for us mm-hmm. when you start having an attrition at the rorm level that's a sales level because one month you train everyone they are on the field by the time you realize it is 30 days you find a set of another bunch of team coming now again you're back to square one start training these guys and and for again the sales team on the ground he finds always finds an alternate way to get things moving for them and 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 they're not least they're least bothered about the data and all those things. they don't worry about you know whose data is that how secure is data how sensitive these data are carrying they're more concerned about that the uh, the incentives the number of targets which they have been given because it's a mindset you see you cannot blame anyone it's all it all it all depends on how you're going to adapt. and today organizations uh, some organizations fail in uh, adopting these technologies uh because of that you know you uh, see once you don't adopt technology keeping in when you bring in a technology we keep in mind the operating cost comes down yeah. the process becomes easier where again you start working on the go back to your bag i mean you go back to la uh, how two three years back then you're back to the expiry so the, my, my only thing challenge is what i face practically on ground one is the training other one is the attrition problem which we face second thing is the mindset of the users why should we use it it's and they always find an alternate way these are the tech thing and the, the last thing what i face in some of the uh, uh, location the remote location connectivity is still a challenge where uh, we are working on that you know and attending even the uh, government is also helping us out in uh, get, building a better infrastructure connectivity internet is because today every application works on a pure internet so yeah. that's where that that's that's a minimal i can say but the first three are very very important it's more of a human which has to adopt it if you don't if you don't adopt that it's of no use discussing on so that's that's a challenge what we face but technically i don't see there's any challenge technology wise i don't see any challenges as the things are in place so these are the few things which i face practically normally any nbs or hfc space today as on today very true um, yeah. and what are the trends um, and best practices for digital adoption journey and ways in which digital adoption can benefit the hfcs and nbfcs Sure. For this question, you know, I I take my organization as a case study. Okay. Uh, when 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 I go back, right, two thousand fifteen, we started off. We had a very big, uh, uh, huge roadmap and all those things. And you know, bringing that and getting this technology to a maturity level took almost two to three years time. Okay. During this ten year, we worked. I mean, we had to actually dirty our hands on the ground, check on that every nook and corner, every possibilities were explored, tested. and lot of data which was collected this data what we have captured this is including the customer profiling data another one is the experience what we had this ex- experience i mean this collection of data has told us you know how we are going to streamline using this data what today what we do if we had a startup branch because initially when we had a concept like you know we had a concept saying that we will create a virtual branch so virtual branch is something you just give him a tab or uh, ask the um, rorm or the nearest branch sales guys to download a app and start using it and and report to the nearest brand that's a concept what yeah. we did okay so this is what something which was new at that point of time where we never had a physical infrastructure we just had one or two rorms using technology logging in the file and getting things done because everything was tech driven all this has helped us to further upgrade and see that but to some extent this was successful to some extent it was a failure because uh went for various reasons administrative reasons the best practices what we follow today is whatever data we 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 start working on those data you know for example in a particular location the data what we have captured today we want to work on those data and find out which are the areas which is going to be very uh prone to delinquency where the area is going to be thing at the same time today the data what has been captured okay uh, especially in the tier 4 tier 3 and tier 4 so that data is used for generating more customers and you know finding out you know the, the mindset the sentiments of the customer and trying to build new products for them what is the requirement you know how, how in the past 4 to 5 years what how is it that particular area gone uh, to be very frank one example what we were thinking at that point of time was the plots which are available how a customer can build a house on the a plot which is available what kind of uh, marketplace we can build so that you know customer rather than going to a multiple places he can get on to my marketplace and is available right from funding 
up to even buying the cement kind of thing, you know, cement, the basic the electrical thing, a plumber thing and all that. So it's available just like your 99 acres when you have to buy a house or if you want to rent a house, everything is available. Similar concept, uh, what we are thinking right now. Okay, that is the best practices what we try to follow going forward. This will help us not only because today everyone and anyone are doing this typical sales culture. You know, you're having a CRM, you do a telecalling, you do a digital media marketing. People walk into your place and, you know, sell that I selling. But today that concept is gone. Today we need to build, some, if you have to be a different uh, game changer in the industry, you need to build a marketplace where everyone come on to that particular marketplace. And so, because it is not that tier three and tier four cities are people are not educated. They are the people who adopt more of technology. They are the people who are more conscious about what they're buying and how they're buying. Okay, and they want everything uh, in a in a proper place. It is not that you know I want everything. I mean spread across places. This takes a lot of time. So one is uh, the new practices. What best practices we are going to follow is existing data. Try creating a marketplace for especially for the HFCs of the tier three, tier four city customers. Bringing everyone onto a single platform, giving a better experience to the customer using technology. Okay, at the same time. Uh, try building a, a lot of different products depending on their requirements, the industry trends, the kind of um, financials they have and, you know, and keep in touch with the customers and see that, you know, the customer at no point of time feels that, you know, you're left in a lurch. He should be very well updated. The communication is very important and anything coming up from the regulator should be passed on. Any benefits coming to the customer should be passed on, which is, a, see, once you beat your technology, there's nothing after EKYC pan, your credit scores, yeah. your bureaus and a traditional, not that has become more of a foundational level and all that. Now you've got to see how you're going to hold the customer, how you're going to build, because still you don't hold the customer, you can't get the data from him. Yeah. Without the data, you can't do a lot of things. So this will help us to grow in a long way. So, see, you can have 100 people, but out of 100 people, what is productivity, what you're going to do? That's where you bring in that technology, your human brains gets involved. And to be very frank, in India, we will still adopt the hybrid model. Okay, we will use technology. We will use a little bit of manual process. Brick and mortar process has always been uh, carried forward because we should respect the sentiments of the customers who come, come us, uh, who trust and come, come to us for buy, taking a loan from us. Mm -hmm. This is all something which we are looking at, and hopefully, this should be the one of the best practices we we are going to um, will be useful to us in the long run. That's it. Fantastic. Um, fantastic. My next question is, what are the disruptive uh, models across the value chain? It's, when you say disruptive, there are multiple models, especially in my industry, if I look at it, uh, yes, everyone makes noise saying that artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning, but both of them require amount of data. If you're a new player in the industry with three years of, uh, um, I mean, if you're exposed to the market for three years, I don't think you find a lot of data with you. So best is to uh, try creating, as I said in the previous uh, thing also, create a marketplace where you have everyone coming, understand the customer's requirement and see that, you know, you service the customer because any housing loan is a long tenure customer who's going to stay with you for minimum five years. Yes, PL and the other consumer role, uh, loans are a short uh, loans, short term loans where you would say one year, two year, depending on the customer. But in a home room, especially customer stays with you for a minimum five years. So see that how you're going to service the customer. Keep in touch with that. Very important is which you have to have the customers in the loop, upgrading the customer, giving him the better so that he doesn't go anywhere else and he giving the best of it. Though we are a private lender, we may not be able to give the best of uh, rate of interest. So to some level, you got to keep the customer in place and you know understand his sentiments and the disruptive models using all this data. What are you going to build again? What kind of scorecards you're going to build? What kind of products you're going to build? What kind of business model you have to bring in understanding the customer sentiment? So if you have a data of 10 years, that will very clearly give you the next two years what you're planning to do. And again, for everything you can do, but end of the day, if you don't have a control of your delicacy in NPA, NPAs, then uh, you tend to get into a wrong route. You can have a rosy picture Sure, you can do a best of best. Yeah. You can have a hundred thousand files login, but that NPA, the quality of files, delicacy, and NPS has to be in control. And for all this, you should have a better technology. You should have better control. Policy should be there. Product should be in place. And governance is very very important, especially in our regulated company like us. That you got to be very cautious. There are a few things which I feel as a CTO, uh, which is important. I think I mean, that that that's what I uh, tell you about this. Fantastic. Uh, great conversation, Vijay, and you've given some 
great insights and very candid responses of what worked, what did not work, what are the challenges, what areas can be looked at now and in the future. So great pointers. Um, my one last question, any other points that you think we've not covered in our conversation um, which you would like to add uh, as a closing remark for our interview? Okay. Uh, I would always say that, you know, always uh, uh, align technology as per your business requirements. Don't overdo technology just because you have to achieve uh, and you have to show that I've implemented this. Because technology is something which runs parallelly with your business. Always be cost conscious. Don't bring in things which is because somebody is investing at uh, one CR or tech doesn't mean that even you have to invest because you've got to see what's required, what's your requirement. And never ever, uh, uh, what do you call that, you know, use technology for uh, any wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. That's a very clear thing. Technology can always be misused. Be very cautious because that's a repetition, the financial impact, everything is there on a company. And when there is an impact on your organization, as an individual, you will have an impact. So mm -hmm. always be very cautious. Cost is very important. Data security is very important. Then do what is required. No, never overdo nor underdo. See that, you know, yes, you should always have a buffer. You can't be 100% successful every time. Tech, tech is always, I mean, tech has never been 100% foolproof. There is technology glitches or that. You just have to know what you want and how you want and how you would. And always keep your management in the loop. Keep the management and the senior people in the loop so that everyone, and it's uh, technology is something which is a teamwork. I, if 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 some if my business team doesn't adopt it, it's no point in me implementing the world's best technology. That's what I my uh, take in this. Absolutely, uh, very rightly said. Um, great conversation with you, Vijay. Thank you so much for joining us on the CI News platform. I look forward to having you many more discussions with you in the future on various other topics of technology. And it's it's growing, right? There's so much to talk yeah. about. There's so much to learn, share. So. I uh, look forward to having more conversations. Thank you once again. And it was Thank you, Kushbu. Have a wonderful uh, week. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you.